guys, Andy here. So you may have seen a couple of days ago my unboxing of the Ulephone Power. Um, I'll start off by saying thanks to mine. It's um, He needed to buy it, I think, for work. He was after an Android device with a massive battery. I think I suggested this this Ulephone Power and he thought it was a good idea. I said, did I want to review it before he, before he had it um, to use? Um, which I said, yeah, I'd love to take a look. So thank you very much, mine. Uh, I don't know a great deal about a Ulephone, to be honest. I've never had a Ulephone phone before. I have heard some negative stuff about them, about the build quality and kind of reliability and problems occurring. But to be fair, you're going to have that with, you know, this, this is a budget phone we're looking at here. This one cost, I believe, about £100. Um, you know, £100 for a phone, there's going to be some problems with it. <clears throat> so I've tried to come in with a fairly open mind and sort of expectations set at the budget end of the scale. But I've been using it for two or three days and I've kind of, I've got on all right with it. Um, so now it's time for me to sort of talk you through my video of my thoughts on it. Uh, we'll start with the design. So it's an interesting, I know when I did the unboxing, I, can't, I couldn't decide what this was. And then on their website, it says it's high quality oak from Quebec. So it actually is wood, which I can believe. You just can't be sure if it's a textured plastic, but they say it's a wood, fine. It is quite a bulky phone. I think it's about nine and a half millimeters thick and um, and it just weigh 190 grams, which is quite heavy, but then it's got a 6,000 milliamp hour battery in it. So it's gonna weigh a, a fair old bit, I suppose. Fairly normal design, aside from the wooden back in this instance. I think there are regular colors, shall we say. Um, so fairly normal design. There is a camera button on the edge there seemed quite odd though. I opened the camera app, but when I press it, it takes like 40 continuous photos and makes like a GIF for you or something. I just want to take a picture when I press it. So, and I couldn't, I couldn't see in the settings where you could change that. Um, we've got the power and the volume on on the same side. They feel, they feel good. There's no issue, no issues. Excuse me, hiccups. There's no issues with them. Um, on the other side, we've got the SIM tray just there. Down the bottom, micro USB charging port. Which these days is a little bit out of date. You hope I hope for kind of a USB Type C, but um, on a hundred pound phone, I guess uh, you're gonna have some some uh, some sacrifices. The speaker is just so the grill goes all the way across across, but I think the speaker's just that bit there where my thumb is. Um, we've got a fingerprint sensor, middle of top back, um, and a camera, which we'll talk about later on with the flash. What I will say about the fingerprint sensor. Um, terrible basically it really is bad probably the worst fingerprint sensor i've ever used and i've tried mapping my or, you know yeah mapping my finger twice i suppose and it's not really got any better what i did find so we're trying if i do it sort of i've kind of learned where works oh having said that that didn't there we go so i have to go if i go flat like that it doesn't seem it doesn't seem even though that's partly oh, it's worth that time it's just really unreliable. Um, I don't know. It, it wasn't common, especially when you're using a phone. You're kind of feeling for the feeling for the unlock. You you definitely can't slide on. So that worked the second time, the second press. It wasn't uncommon. I was pressing it maybe three times before it unlocked. Um, and it just kind of put me off using it. I almost felt like I was quicker just to type in the pin code. So that's the first downside for the Eulophone power. The, the fingerprint sensor seemed to me to be very bad. Um, strangest way, it's got a micro SIM, not a nano SIM. So it's not the tiny, tiny ones, which most phones have these days. It's the one slightly above the micro SIM. I mean, it's not a huge problem. Any SIM that you buy, generally they come in the, from the huge, big, whatever that original size is, to micro to nano. You can pop out whichever you need. So it's not particularly an issue. I was just a little bit surprised. It's a bit of a pain for me putting my SIM in from my Pixel XL because that is a nano, so I had to find an adapter. But it was not a massive problem. Uh, if we talk about the hardware itself, it's not on GSM Marina, this this phone. So it was a bit, a little bit harder for me to, to find the exact specs. But on their website, um, I found, and using uh, like Geekbench, Tells me it's a 1.3 gigahertz MTK, so MediaTek, 6753 octa-core. So the GPU is the Mali T720. It's got three gig of RAM and it's got 16 gig of storage. Um, you can put a micro SD card in the second SIM slot in the uh, the, the SIM drawer, SIM tray. All of that gives you 2,734-ish on Geekbench. That's run a couple of times at the average, which um, is not great. I'm not going to lie to you. I was really quite surprised. Having just tested the uh, Xiaomi 
um, uh, Mi A1, which is still a budget phone, 170 pounds. So I mean, uh, yeah, quite a bit more expensive than this in some ways. But that that Geekbench is like 5,000. So I was expecting kind of I don't know three and a half to four maybe from this. Two seven, quite low. Um, and the other thing, it's got the. I'm not going to do it now. <sighs> yeah, no, I'm not going to do it because it just takes so long. It's got the slowest boot up of any phone I've ever known. It just seems to take forever for it to boot up. Kind of odd. Having said all of that, it's actually quite a slick device. You don't really notice any lag anywhere. Generally nice and smooth. So like I said, I've been using it for a couple of days. Um, and sometimes with budget devices, even the Xiaomi, Xiaomi Mi A1, there was bits of lag here and there when you did things. But that's actually pretty snappy. That's kind of, it feels quicker than the Xiaomi, which is a little bit odd. Um, I didn't mention the, the button. So we've got a home button obviously in the middle there. We've got a back button on the right, which you could argue is the wrong way around. Back button by Android standards should be on this side. And on the left is not the app switcher, it's a menu button. Now that's kind of old school. Um, and that's partly one of the weird things I'm gonna talk about the software briefly uh, in a short while. There's various things that just give it a very dated feel to the device. Uh, and that's one of them, a menu button. Uh, you know, I, I can't think the last time I had a phone that had a menu button. The screen, oh no, so the, I'll just point out there's, there's no 5G Wi-Fi, not really a deal breaker. I'm not sure, I'm a big fan of 5G Wi-Fi, it doesn't go through walls as well as the 2.4. Obviously there's no NFC in a, in a sort of budget phone like this. There's no wireless charging. So all these things you wouldn't necessarily expect. The 5G Wi-Fi maybe, but as I say, not really a deal breaker. The screen itself, is uh, 1080 by 1920. Again, the only information, a five and a half inch, sorry. The only information I can find, well, that is the only information I can find. Uh, it's got Corning Gorilla Glass 3, so a, a sort of a couple of generations old Gorilla Glass. But I think generally the screen is pretty good, I would say. Um, it's definitely high enough pixels per inch. Um, the colors, I would say, generally seem, seem pretty good. Um, I've not had any issues in, in that respect. Uh, let's quickly, yeah, there we go. Good old Ed. I don't know why I do keep playing this video. It's not the best. It's not like it's got kind of popping colours or anything. So I will mention, well, I already mentioned the speaker. I would say um, it scored quite well in my testing. So the average was 87.4 decibels. That was in the top sort of quarter or so of devices. There's not that many that are that much louder. So it's quite a loud speaker. The quality perhaps not. Um, particularly good, but I don't, I'm not sure you'd expect it to be. Let's just turn it up briefly. But definitely, as I listen to, you can see the screen in action. Definitely, as I listen to my podcast in the morning, plenty loud enough for me. I mean, that that score is basically the same as my Pixel XL. So, speaker-wise, uh, pretty good volume. Screen-wise, then one of the other tests I do uh, is with my light meter. So I get a white screen, crank it up to full blast, and check the light meter over it. And the highest it went up to was 497 lux. Again, that's quite low. Um, the the top-end Samsungs will be up in the 800s. My Pixel, I forget now. You can probably see I've probably put the graphic maybe there. Um, my Pixel probably in the 700s, I think. And I only used it for a couple of days and it wasn't particularly sunny, so I didn't really get the feel for how it was, but that score would tell me you'd struggle a little bit when it's a bright day if you're using it outside. So not a bad screen, and I think, again, for the price that you're paying, yeah, that's kind of acceptable. Uh, if we get to the software, it's pretty much stock Android, but at this point it's version 6.0. The security patch you can see is 5th of September 2016. So that was, well, 15 months, 15 and a half months ago. So a little bit dated in that respect. Um, it is a very bare install though. Now, there's bits and pieces that I've installed. I had to install Chrome, Fit, as you, I guess you might expect that, a YouTube, um, Google Drive, Google Hangouts, all of these things I had to install myself. It is that bare bones, uh, a sort of Android ROM. Uh, there's a few bits in the settings. I wasn't quite so. Where has it gone? Smart, some 
somatosensory. So I don't know what that means. Someone I should have Googled perhaps, but maybe it's a bit of an intellectual word. So I think basically you can do stuff with the sensor. Honestly, I didn't really try launcher move to next page. Let's okay, let's turn that on and let's give it a go, I suppose. There you go, look, that's I mean that's kind of clever, I suppose. I don't even actually see I'm not actually touching the screen. See that? Hey, it's kind of clever. Um, it's not something I particularly need, but yeah, okay. And we do have gesture and a lot, which I tried to play a bit with, but couldn't really get it to. So the double double click to wake is actually double tap to wake. There we go. Um, but obviously then it's locked, so do that. And there are again, I'm not really. Uh, I don't. I don't massively try too hard with them. I'm not a big gesture kind of person. But they are there if that's your thing, I suppose. Um, strangely, I couldn't get my Android Wear watch to pair. What have we got? I, don't uh, I couldn't get my Android Wear watch to pair with it properly. It was kind of weird. I thought I had on the first occasion, but just the watch seemed to sort of time out in, in like updates and things. And any other time I tried to then, but even though I, I was really to be sure I'd told it to get it in Bluetooth, I, I removed it from the Android Wear app on the phone. This is. And I would try and pair it again. It kind of flashed through the bit where you get to say, "Yeah, pair with it." So it flashed up and went, and the phone was still showing the pairing code. So I kind of gave up after a little while. Um, I don't know if that's an issue generally or just some bad luck I was having. Um, as something to be aware of, I did for sort of five minutes or so. I was very confused as to why I couldn't use data. I was checking my APN settings; I didn't seem to be all right. And it wasn't until I went into data usage somewhere. Oh, actually, I don't know. oh, there it is. And mobile data was turned off by default, so just bear that one in mind. It's, it's pretty basic, but uh, something to be aware of, I suppose. If we move on to the camera, so it's a 13 megapixel f 1.8 camera on the back there, which isn't, doesn't sound too bad. F 1.8, that's pretty good. Even top end phones are generally only f 1.8. There are some a few that are smaller, lower, lower is better. Um, and the front camera being a 5 megapixel, I don't really use the front camera, I realized actually after a few days. But the rear camera, it seemed okay. Budget devices that can often be for for some people a deal breaker. It could be that bad, but I thought it was all right. I mean, I didn't again. I didn't really get to use it in nice, bright, blue sky, sunny weather type conditions. It was always a bit cloudy, a bit overcast, so you never quite get the sort of the popper, pop, color popping um, opportunities in some ways. But I thought the picture generally looked okay um, in lower light. Uh, you get a bit of blur if anyone was moving, so I took it with me to Comic Con. I tried to take a few pictures here and there with it. It wasn't my main device at the time. Um, it seemed to do okay. Video seemed to be reasonable. Um, it's got electronic Im image stabilization. Uh, to an extent, you could perhaps see it wasn't too bad. There wasn't too much shake, but there was still a bit of shake. Again, we're talking about a hundred pound device. Uh, I guess not too bad. For all, the camera it was all right. I don't think it's enough that would stop you from getting it. You get what you pay for, and the camera, yeah, it's kind of well, it's probably a bit more than a hundred pounds worth of camera to be fair to it, because a hundred pounds really isn't much. Then on to the main thing that you, uh, well, it's the kind of named after it, I suppose, it's called the power. And it's got the very, they're keen to point out on the website, it's a Sony battery. Um, so a Sony 6050 milliamp hour lithium ion polymer battery. And that is pretty, that's the biggest battery I've ever tested or ever used. And it did come out top in my battery test, which is an hour long test of playing video and then reloading web pages. And it was still on 94% at the end of the test. Um, then I've been using, I kind of, I was a bit annoyed, I, I put it onto charge, and literally seconds after I plugged the charger, I thought, oh, I shouldn't have bothered, I wanted to, I should have tried going through to a second day, because I was, I was still at 75% last night when I went to bed, uh, which, you know, I was pretty good, I would say. So right now, look, um, it's been going from since before 6 a.m., it's almost 7, so we've been going 13 hours, we're still at 81%. Now, my screen on time is generally quite low. What are we up to now? An hour and five minutes. Now, I know some people will do three, four, five hours in a day. I don't know. I, can't, I don't use my phone when I'm working, so I don't really see how you clock that much up. Um, but it's telling me, look, approximately two days left, and we've done one day. So it's saying it can go three days. And if I'm at 81%, I mean, I'm almost to think I might go four days. You know, that is really very good battery life. Uh, hackability. It's not even listed on the XDA developer's website. The Power 2 is, so this is the original Power, there is a Power 2. So I'm guessing it's probably not that hackable, or there aren't, people aren't developing for it. Um, so in conclusion, it's actually pretty slick in operation. You know, the 
the OS, the smoothness, is surprisingly good for a hundred pound phone. Um, it does feel a bit dated in the UI. So let me just show you the camera, for example, and we go into the settings. That just, I don't know, that makes me think of, and obviously it's version 6.0, which is a couple of years old, but I don't know, that kind of, those buttons and everything just makes it feel like it's, I don't know, like ancient, basically. Kind of weird. The menu button on the, on the bottom left doesn't help. So a little bit weird, feels quite dated. Obviously it's a battery monster. If you're after a phone with a powerful battery, it's gonna last you a good few days, this is not a bad option. Um, for me, the fingerprint sensor was probably the worst bit of it. I mean, actually, while I've been testing, it's not been too bad. Most times, I've just generally found in my own use when, so there, you know, if you miss that fingerprint sensor at all, it's just not gonna respond to you. Well, it's not gonna unlock. So that's probably the worst bit. Whether or not it's a deal breaker, I guess that's up to you. Um, but all in all, for a hundred pound, I think actually it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It feels quite dated, but it's quite snappy. Amazing battery life. It could be what fits the bill. You know, if that's what you're looking for, you're probably happy. If you just have a regular phone, there might be some better options. You might want to spend a little bit more um, uh, to, to sort of upgrade it just generally. But for £100, that's not bad. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But for now, my name's Andy, and I'll catch you all again soon.